My name is Jen, and I am on a journey in order to break free from the destructive patterns of disordered eating and in order to embrace a nourishing lifestyle. My roadmap can be described using an acronym of the word nourisher. So I'm doing daily video blog posts in order to encourage you, equip you, and keep you up to date on my progress. If this content is helpful or encouraging to you, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing with others. It is my deep desire that these videos would help to ignite nourishing transformations in us all. Hi everybody, and welcome to day 13 of my Nourisher check-in. Yes, day 13. I, I keep screwing up these numbers, and I'm so sorry, but I think I've got it right now, maybe. I don't know, I make no promises, but I think it's day 13 of the Nourisher check-in, whatever it is. Um, I, as you know, am using this nourisher acronym to stop and reflect on my day as I journey uh, towards being a nourisher and away from patterns of disordered eating. So today I had like a theme as I was kind of thinking back through the day and the different elements, the different feelings, the different emotions, the different situations that came up. There is this theme of music that came up and, and I've really been thinking and pondering about what is the role that music, which I just think is such an incredibly beautiful God-given gift, what is the role that it plays in this journey or that the music could play in this journey? And uh, it was good to, good to have that come to mind today. So when I look at, at checking in with the, the Nourisher check-in, I start, of course, with the Notice My Emotions. And one thing that I really um, experienced today was the way that music can play the role of helping me to notice and helping almost like unearth um, some underlying emotions that are inside of me. I was listening to, I was feeling um, some pretty strong emotions that I was, um, yeah, just maybe having a bit of a hard time processing or metabolizing and was, was just kind of working through them and trying to work through my day. And I turned on a song, and actually I had never heard this particular song. It's an artist that I love, but um, I had never heard this song before. And it just helped bring up or articulate for me so much of what I was feeling in that moment. And then it also kind of spilled over into O, um, into opening up to others, because as I had such a hard time articulating or kind of expressing what it was that I was experiencing to a loved one, I actually played the song for him and for, uh, for my husband. And as he listened to it, he looked at me and he said, is she singing about you? And there was something so um, helpful, impactful, um, it was almost like scales kind of falling off um, that that this song helped me to share myself with him and helped him to see me in a clearer way than I could have, at least at this point in my journey um, of most emotional awareness and of being able to express my emotions than I could have done at this point in time. So it was such an incredible gift and... Um, yeah, it's just a really beautiful, power, powerful experience. Let me press pause on the music theme for a second and go on to you, understanding the cycle. And today it was kind of like like cycles, uh, you know, I, I don't know what your journey is like. Um, you know, feel free to, to share with us in the comments below uh, if you'd like. But sometimes these cycles, the, you know, the disordered eating cycle, or in my case, specifically the binge eating cycle, sometimes it can last for months. You can be, I can be kind of locked on one part of the cycle for months, weeks, days, but it also can be more, um, macro in that, or more, sorry, more macro in that it can be hours too, um, and it can all, I can go through the whole cycle all within a day or all within, you know, a few hours. And I, I felt a little bit of that today in that I woke up this morning. I don't often have hunger cues first thing in the morning. I can often have strong carb cravings, but um, I, I, I don't always, it's getting a little bit better, but I don't always have strong hunger cues first time in the morning. Um, and I usually make the decision to eat because I, I know the long-term impact is more beneficial if I do. 
Um, but this morning I, I didn't, and then I knew the day was going to be busy, but I really wanted to get my walk in. So I did my walk before eating and then, and then, and then, and all of a sudden it was 11, 1130 and I still hadn't eaten anything yet. And this can be a real kind of point of trap in my brain because when I haven't eaten for a while, there's something in my brain that, um, I can catch the thought of it saying, Oh, great. You haven't, you haven't eaten for a while. Kind of almost like, almost like there's some lie in my brain that thinks that if I don't eat, that that would be somehow best for me. Maybe I'd lose weight or maybe I'd, I, I don't know what my brain is thinking, but somehow it like celebrates if I'm able to miss a meal. Whereas, um, my, my, my true thoughts, my, my true heart knows that it is not something to celebrate to, to miss a meal. I mean, if it happens, it happens, but, um, but it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't line up with the values of how I want to live and how I want to eat and how I want to nourish my body. So I did, I did finally sit down. And then of course, by the time then I do sit down, then I'm so hungry that I'm, you know, it can go from that restricting, Oh, it's so good that you, I haven't eaten anything to now I, you know, ravenous and I can't get enough and it can turn into a binge. So I um, tried to do kind of a similar thing as yesterday and have some, you know, really high healthy fat, avocado, that kind of stuff uh, in my initial meal and then tried to eat more consistently for the rest of the day. So do know that that cycle can creep in just at a moment's notice. Um, you know, body checking for me has been a really big deal and I, I don't know if that's a, a part of your journey or not, um, but I have to be careful with, you know, how, how often um, I'm checking. I don't own a scale for, for that reason to keep the number, the actual weight number, um, not in the forefront of my mind, but it's so easy for me to, to run comparisons and for that to also be part of the cycle. We can talk about that another day, but yeah, so that was the you part. So for rewire our brain, let's go back to this topic of music. Um, someone said that if you want a fit body, go to the gym. If you want a fit brain, listen to music or interact with music. And I, I just, I find it so fascinating. There's so many interesting studies done on music, its impact on cognition, helping our memory, um, helping us be able to do cognitive, cognitive uh, functions, um, but also on stress reduction, anxiety reduction, uh, depressive symptom reduction. Um, there, there was one that I came across that talked about actually helping you eat less, um, you know, or I, I, I would say help you eat more mindfully perhaps. And yeah, just some really, some really positive impacts. There was one doctor who does a lot of study on this topic of looking at the neurological impacts of music. And he said, you know, music isn't going to cure anyone, but it is certainly a really, you know, impressive um, tool for therapy. And so I, I wanted to consider that a little bit more. So where I noticed... Um, and where I chose to use music as a tool to help rewire my brain today was I was in quite a bit of overwhelm today for a number of, of uh, you know, a number of, of points during the day. It's a tiring day. Mondays are, are really uh, taxing for me from a work perspective. And, um, you know, I was, I could feel myself getting a little bit nippy with the kids in the evening. And we always take time to give thanks before starting our meals and, we sometimes we quite often we sing our thanks. So tonight I thought, okay, we're going to sing our thanks, but I kind of hammed it up and I started using the table as a drum and the kids just got right into it. And I made sure there was a smile on my face. And whenever we're singing thanks, I make a point of making eye contact with each person around the table. And, um, I did that and they just got so into it and I could feel just kind of this lightness that came over me in being able to experience that together with the kids. It was such a, such a fabulous, um, yeah, just brain rewire, which I, I needed, um, some redirection. And I actually, you know, so often I, I don't know, but we, you'd, you'd have to, to fill us in on that. But so often I turn to food in order to receive that dopamine release. And again, dopamine is that neurotransmitter that is, has a big role in us feeling pleasure, right? And dopamine is, is uh, released with uh, high carb or sugary foods. And so 
often I would turn to food in order to get that dopamine. And one thing that I need to do in order to rewire my brain in order to break free of the destructive habits and embrace nourishing ones is find new ways to, um, you know, experience those pleasurable dopamine releases. And of course, we'll talk about another time, maybe those even more nourishing and satisfying oxytocin releases, which is that bonding, uh, love chemical or hormones. So, um, yeah, so that was so great. Got some dopamine going and, um, really ignited some really fun conversation over the dinner table that really, um, yeah, it was just, it was a beautiful time. Oh, uh, where are we at now? So after R is I, insulin friendly eating. So this was interesting. So we were at friend's house recently, I think I mentioned for supper and they made this, these amazing taco salad um, taco salad or taco, whatever buffet. And I have been craving tacos ever since. And I've already made them twice since that time. And I was actually starting to crave it so much that I kind of was like wondering like, why, why am I craving this so much? And I have, I actually went back to the bottle and I live overseas. And so I have to like really diligently check labels on packages, particularly we have uh, some family members with sensitivities and allergies. So I'm, I'm pretty grueling with my label checks, but somehow maybe it's just been so long that I use this taco seasoning that I just totally forgot, but the taco seasoning has sugar in it. So like my body, it's like, it's like those sniffing dogs at the airport. Like my body can find sugar and like demand it. Um, it, it's amazing. Like the, the, you know, in, in my current interpretation or understanding of it, it like the, the level of addiction is, is insane. So yeah, so I've got a, if anybody has a recommendation for a good, um, you know, um, just spice, <laughs> um, you know, taco seasoning, maybe I just need to make my own. If you've got a good taco seasoning recipe, please, please, please send it to me or put it down below. Um, because I need to, to find one that uh, doesn't have sugar in it. So my, now watch myself, I'm gonna go go into a new menu withdrawal as I withdraw from taco seasoning, it's crazy. Um, S, so S actually in regards to sleep, you know, decent night sleep last night, and, and S actually kind of goes back to this theme of music again, because one thing I also did tonight and, and do almost every night in order to calm my girls down to put them to bed is to sing to them. And my mom did this for me when I was a little girl. And that, if I look back on my relationship with my mom, that is the most profound bonding time and experience that uh, consistently I think we, we, ever, we ever had was that bedtime. There was touch involved. She would rub my back, which I do for my girls as well. And um, something about the, um, that, beautiful interplay of, of nighttime and song and touch just totally helped to soothe and calm and settle and just remind me of what an incredibly powerful tool that is for our sleep and our, our rhythms there as well. Uh, hydration went fine today. I did teach in the classroom today. I teach, um, at a couple of different, um, you know, university institutions and one is online, but one is back in the classroom and I did remember my bottle today. And yeah, that was, that was very good. And my, my bottles are refilled and by the door and ready to go for tomorrow. So that's been such a helpful tip in helping to stay hydrated. Exercise. I think I mentioned that I skipped breakfast in order to do exercise this morning, which was not good to skip breakfast, but was really good to prioritize exercise. Um, what I'm noticing or had done some reading on, we'll, we'll talk about it maybe more in depth another time, but um, I think that my cortisol levels might be messed up. And I read an article recommending that if people suspect that that's the case to try to exercise earlier in the day rather than later in the day. So I've been trying to kind of front load my exercise. So I had a great walk out in nature, like we talked about yesterday, um, just enjoyed so much the green in the trees. And um, that was just a fabulous time. So for our, you know, this idea of, of the reward, what's the long term? Always, always, always kind of like 
beginning with the end in mind and always answering this question for ourselves. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And tonight, or, you know, you can call it a reward. You can call it reason, like call it whatever you want. But tonight for me, it was seeing, it was like these Kodak moments of these little girls faces while they hammed it up and, you know, did drums on the table. And, um, it's worth, it's worth the journey for me when I learn those little nuggets and get to kind of apply them to my everyday life and then watch it ignite joy and delight. Oh, it like that totally, it, it births such deep appreciation in me. Um, and I, it's those little moments that I want to capture. And actually you can kind of capture those in appreciation, which I'll, you know, sorry, that's just a teaser. We'll talk about that another time, but these are moments that you can actually give them like a handle or a name. Like what would I call that one? Um, I don't know, table, table drumming or something. I don't know. I, I need a, I need a, uh, <laughs> it was so funny. I wish I could have videotaped it for you guys. Um, but you can kind of give it a handle and a name and then you can bring it up later and relive it. And actually your body will release the same, many of the same, um, you know, good feeling hormones as it did the time when you originally experienced it, when you relive it again later uh, and bring it up again as an appreciation memory later. Uh, so that's a great, great rewiring your brain skill that has been totally formative for me in this journey and uh, that I'll probably talk about a lot because it's really important to me. So I've gone on and on. That's my Nourish Your Check-In for today. Um, yeah, music is a, is a wonderful, wonderful tool, but for helping us notice our emotions, evoking or unearthing, helping to bring to the surface some emotions that maybe are a little bit, you know, stuck or trapped or hidden to help us to um, express our emotions to others and um, also to help us to kind of jumpstart our brain and rewire and rework and uh, get us into a better headspace as well. So I hope, hope you can um, try that tool. Do let me know if you tried it and um, put a comment and let me know if you've had past experience about that or something if you're going to try in the future. would love to hear from you. And if you would like to do your nourisher check-in, please feel free to pop it down below. I uh, would love to keep in touch with you and continue to encourage you and inspire you on your journey. Have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye.